I was an artillery operations officer for a couple of years. You know, the artillery guys, our job purely was to do, you know, very destructive and lethal targeting. Um, most of the time I was in self-defence or deliberate operation contexts. But everyone was really unsure on what they could and couldn't do at the start, um, which is actually really dangerous. And, you know, I thought I was a hard ass. You know, I was, I was hard to work for. And I would use what I would call controlled aggression to realign people when they weren't achieving the right objectives. The outbursts, because I had outlets for them, they weren't so much a problem until after I'd worked out what happened. And as I was going through my recovery, there were outbursts of rage in ways that weren't controllable. But still my ability to draw on that rage instantly was scary. The total collapse was certainly, you know, sitting in a room with a counsellor and my wife and the counsellor asking me if I'm if I'm if I'm ever angry and then realising that's the only state I existed in. Used to, I think. What, what year was your RMC year? Uh, well, I got hurt. So I was there in 2002, then got hurt, spent 2003 in Romani, and then... Th Didn't join the army to have an identity. I joined the army to, to, to serve. Um, and that's the part I still identify as providing service. Identifying as a veteran, I think, is very important to me personally. And I think it's important to understand how different people identify as a veteran. And my, my academic work, hopefully, will be doing creative work in terms of helping understand how veterans experience life after the Army. Uh, Air Force and Navy as well, got to include the other services. Right. I'll hold those in. Uh... The uniform was interesting too. It's been a while since I've put one on. Yeah, that's the first three years since you've put a uniform on? I think so, three, maybe two and a half. Yeah, that, that particular uniform would have definitely been three, so I put cams on. Uh, looking in the mirror um, behind you while you're taking the shots, um, I could see myself and having the molasses creep up above the neck. You can kind of see like what was happening underneath the uniform for all those years, but you know, you never could see it. It isn't just, it wasn't just shedding like, you know, part of the reason for the molasses being there or the, the anxiety and stress being there in the first place. Um, but as I peeled it off, it took some of it with it. And you find that for me, when I, when I transitioned from full-time service, removing the uniform took a heap of the weight of some of that stress that had been bundled up in that, that self-worth and identity. I didn't think it was gonna be as powerful as it was, but yeah, it was just, it was when, uh, I think I was holding it like this and you were doing a few shots and we were adjusting the lighting. And then I looked down and I saw how much of the molasses was on the shirt. When you're going through mental health, you, you're so exposed. I guess often the reality is most people don't even know you're going through it, right? We've got some practice. I think the relationship with the... Um, with the uniforms probably evolving. Um, we'll see how we go. I have a feeling in June, I, I do have to put on the, um, the polyester uniform to go to, a, to an event, which I'll be quite comfortable doing, um, noting that it's not gonna be the one that sat in the back of my car for two years. But um, it'll, uh, it'll certainly be confronting, I think, um, for me to, when I do put the uniform back on for work purposes. Yeah, just squeezing and wiping off on each other and I said while we were doing it, it was the best fun I've had on a Sunday morning, um, which when you look at, you know, the subject matter probably doesn't really gel when you're saying, you know, um, we're going to go and explore, you know, PTS and, and veterans mental health. It's not really what you'd call a fun Sunday morning, but um, the metaphor of molasses was amazing. And, and, and I know I said that before we started, but I didn't really know until I started playing with it. And then you get that, uh, that you know, that oh shit moment of, oh wow, this is, this is how it felt at this point in time in my life. Mm. I think I've got 